Hey everybody, my name's Alex Corson, and welcome to the History of Video Games with Alex Corson. Yes, I know, finally, it has a name. Last time I was here, I discussed the history of LJN. And while it was mainly a hassle due to computer problems, it was, it was a lot of fun. I figured I could do the same concept again, but this time I'm here to talk about one of my favorite consoles ever, the Sega Dreamcast. Released in 1998 in Japan and 1999 in North America and Europe, this was Sega's last and fifth console before, this, before they made themselves into a third-party developer. The system did not last long, however. It was discontinued in January 2001. So today I am here to discuss the Dreamcast, and I am discuss why even though it failed to live on, it still captivated millions. When I say that, I mean the new millennium of gamers. Before the Dreamcast, there was the Sega Saturn. The 32-bit system was released in Japan in 1994, followed by the US and European release a year later. Sega designed the system after they made numerous attempts to keep the Sega Genesis alive, with the Sega CD and Sega 32X attachments, which really never went anywhere. With the Sony PlayStation released on September 9th, 1995, and the Sega Saturn released on May 11th, 1995, it gave the Saturn a four-month lead in the console race. By September 1995, Sega had sold 80,000 units. But on the first day alone, Sega, the PlayStation sold 100,000 units. Now that's a uh, pretty big embarrassing fail for them, isn't it? Then Nintendo released a Nintendo 64 on September 29th, 1996. And it sold over 400,000 units in four months. That's 100,000 units a month, guys. Then, the Saturn was in now third place of the race, and at the same time, dying quickly. When 1997 arrived, statistics show that Sega controlled over 12% of the console market, while Nintendo controlled 40 and Sony controlled 47. The data showed that Sega began to fall. The Saturn became a commercial failure, with the company losing $267 million. Sega realized their situation and began to make a new system that had a 128-bit processing unit. Codenamed Katana during development, Sega announced officially their new system, the Sega Dreamcast, on May 21, 1998. They explained the technical features of this new system, including a 56K modem hookup for online play, stereo quality sound, and a 3D graphics chip made in cooperation with NEC. The games are made on GD-ROMs, which are double density CDs that could hold over 1 gigabyte of data. Sega designed the GD-ROMs with Yamaha and hopes to stop piracy that is common in CD-ROMs. On November 27, 1998, Sega released the Dreamcast in Japan, and while the launch seemed successful, Sega felt it went horribly wrong due to a lack of graphic chips by NEC. Sega sold over 450,000 units in the first few weeks, but according to Shoichara Arumajiri, former CEO of Sega, they said that 200,000 to 300,000 additional units could have been sold if we had enough supply and graphic chips. Then Sega received the worst news they could possibly get. Sony officially announced the PlayStation 2 on March 2nd, 1999 in Tokyo, Japan. Expected to launch the next year, this new system would have amazing capabilities. The PlayStation 2 could render 60 million polygons per second, while the Dreamcast can render 3 million polygons per second. Games for the PlayStation 2 can be made on DVDs, which could hold 4.7 gigabytes on a single layer disc and 8.5 gigabytes on a dual layer disc. The Dreamcast -S games could be made on GD ROMs, which could hold 1.2 gigabytes. The PlayStation 2 could also have broadband internet support. 
and the Dreamcast has a 56k modem hookup and you will have to wait for the broadband adapter to be released. And the final big reason why Sega became extremely nervous was that the PlayStation 2 could play DVD movies while the Dreamcast cannot. This side-by-side -side comparison that I showed you, showed you basically just explained that explained to gamers that the Dreamcast was an outdated system. With the PlayStation 2 slated to arrive in, in 2000, Sega created their plan. Build up a fan base and provide a lot of great tech games before the PlayStation 2 hit store shelves. Bernard Stoller, executive vice president in charge of park development and third party relations at Sega of America, responded to the PlayStation 2 by saying this Sony's machine sounds impressive, but the fact is, it's still on paper. Dreamcast is here now. While Sony is working to create that hardware, Sega will already be in the marketplace with Dreamcast. Due to his mental struggles, Sega will play Stolar with Peter Moore. Many gamers know Moore today as president of EA Sports and as former vice president of Microsoft's interactive entertainment business division. You will, you will might not know this, but Moore began to work for Microsoft based on his experiences with the Dreamcast after his Sega era ended. The Dreamcast created hype in, Amer in North America from ads dating the launch date, $9999 for $199. The North American launch was a huge success for Sega. After selling out, retailers demanded for more consoles. In two weeks, Sega sold over 500,000 units. The system is credited for its great launch titles and online connectivity all ready to go. There were 16 launch titles that came out with the Dreamcast. So just to name a few, you got Soul Calibur, Sega Sports NFL 2K, Ready to Rumble Boxing, and Sonic Adventure. By the end of 1999, Sega sold 1.2 million units. However, the PlayStation 2 continued to float over them, like a rain cloud that will devastate their day when the time comes. Let's take a break from the history and talk about the Dreamcast. For one thing, the Dreamcast is small, so you can pretty much place it in the back. On the top, there's two buttons, power, which turns the system on, and open, which opens up the CD drive. One thing that's convenient about the system is that the Dreamcast has four controller ports. If a console has four of these, this eliminates the need to buy certain multiplayer adapters to play certain multiplayer games, like the four score adapter on the Nintendo Entertainment System and the multi tap adapter for the PlayStation 2. On the back of the Dreamcast, you have a serial port, an audio video port, a line in for online connectivity, which I don't have, and the AC in plug. Another convenient part was that it's not proprietary. Just to explain this easier, some consoles have power adapters that require a certain plug or a certain voltage. If for some reason you lost or broke the power cord for the Dreamcast, the chances of finding a replacement is high. That is how easy it is. The controller is also nice looking. On the back, you have two trigger buttons. On the front, you have a D-pad, an analog, and an analog stick on the left, and four buttons on the right. In the center, there is a stop button, but it doesn't have a select button. The memory card, called the Visual Memory Unit, or VMU, has a small screen and even a D-pad with A and B buttons. That's because some games offer mini games that can be put on the memory card. It is plugged into the controller, and during gameplay, custom animation from the game will be displayed on the screen. You, you can also exchange game data by connecting the memory cards on the front. They created accessories, such as a fishing rod, keyboard and mouse, and a microphone. A Dreamcast is a really unique system, but it's time to solve the question. What went wrong with the Dreamcast? On March 4, 2000, Sony released the PlayStation 2 in Japan, and it was a huge success for the company. On the launch day alone, 600,000 PlayStation 2s were sold. Since there were only about 1 million Dreamcasts sold in Japan, 
and about 2 million sold in the United States, Sega shifted their attention over to the, to the American market. Peter Moore said, You have to fish where the fish are biting. Sega also made changes in its in-house development. Instead of keeping well-known designers such as Yuji Naka, who programmed Sonic the Hedgehog, and Yu Suzuki, who created Shenmue under Sega's roof, they split them up to form independent developers for the Dreamcast. This is a genius move, as these new developers can experiment and increase the Dreamcast library. But the power of the PlayStation 2 was really self-evident. Many developers of Dreamcast games hope to see their creations on the PlayStation 2 one day in the future. On March 10, 2000, six days after Sony released the PlayStation 2 in Japan, Microsoft officially announced the Xbox. Not the Xbox 360 or Xbox One, but the original Xbox. Microsoft noticed that the PlayStation 2 is taking over living rooms at a fast rate, as well as its capability to do something far more than just play games. Their new console is being made to compete with the PlayStation 2. Sega is now in a hot zone and faced with a decision. Either increase their user base now or give up. In September 2000, Sega of America launched SegaNet. How does it work? Well, for $21.95 a month, you could have access to Sega's internet service, which includes web browsing, fast online gameplay, and more. If you sign up for a two-year subscription, you receive both the Dreamcast and the keyboard for free. But things are not looking well for Sega. Many executives working there and were calling for them to end their hardware business. The PlayStation 2 it was continued to sell really well, and Nintendo announced a GameCube. There is, however, a small chance of hope for Sega in September of 2000. For one thing, Sony could not ship as many consoles to the US as they originally hoped due to parts shortages in Japan. Also, the launch titles for the PlayStation 2 was poorly received by critics. The PS2 also cost $299 compared to the Dreamcast's $149 price tag. For these reasons, Dreamcast sales went up during the 2000 holiday season, but it was short-lived. On January 24th, 2001, Sega announced that the Dreamcast is going to be discontinued. There was a lot of inventory stocked up, and due to poor sales, they felt that there is no other need to make any more consoles. Sega then officially stunned the video game world by stating that they are pulling out of the hardware business and now making games for multiple platforms, thus establishing themselves as third-party game developers. Despite the announcement, many new games were being released for the Dreamcast and even some accessories, such as a broadband adapter accessory that replaced the 56K dial-up connection. But it did not matter to consumers. All that mattered was that the system is ending and interest for the system is declining. It took Sega 22 months to sell 6.5 million Dreamcasts. But it took Sony only 15 months to sell 10 million PlayStation 2s. So here's the question some people want answers for. What happened? Here are the reasons why the Dreamcast failed. Number 1. The PlayStation 2. The system had better technological advantages than the Dreamcast, and the inclusion of the DVD drive hurt Dreamcast sales. Believe it or not, DVDs were really not that popular in Japan before the PlayStation 2. After the PS2's release, the DVD market skyrocketed. Also, the announcements of the Xbox and the GameCube acted like nails in a coffin for Sega in the hardware era. Number 2. The Dreamcast had a lack of third-party support. Most of the games in the Dreamcast library were made by Sega, and some third-party developers, including EA Sports, rejected the idea to make games for the Dreamcast after the Saturn's failures. Number 3. Game Piracy 
Where the Dreamcast was released, another piece of technology was gaining popularity for PCs, the CD burner. Using the CD burner, hacker groups online soon began ripping the images off the GD ROMs via the serial port or the broadband adapter, and created images that could be burned and used on a CDR disc. Since the Dreamcast requires no hardware modifications to play CDR discs, pirated Dreamcast games became a really popular choice. As of now, 10.6 million Dreamcasts were sold. Dreamcast had a really royal following. Many people believe that the Dreamcast felt like a real gaming system. After Sega's roller coaster ride, the Dreamcast was like fresh air for Sega fanatics. Even today, independent developers continue to make games for the Dreamcast. Sega, you will never be forgotten for creating this thing. Your name shall be forever immortalized in the name of existence. That's all for this episode of, of Video Game Aim History. Thanks for watching. And keep things classy mainly.